Normally, the cow is able to adapt its metabolism to these changes in physiological state. But if the immune system is activated, that, that creates additional challenges to the cow. We tend to have more problems then with, with subclinical or clinical ketosis. And in turn, that can lead to other, other problems. Um, the immune system activation tends to reduce blood calcium further at calving and, and into the very early part of lactation. And so more uh, subclinical or, or, or even clinical uh, hypocalcemia. My name is Luis Ferrero. I'm one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt podcast. And today we have the privilege of receiving Dr. Jean Drakely, prof uh, professor in animal science at the University of Illinois. Uh, first, welcome Dr. Drakely. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, could you please give us a brief uh, introduction and background about yourself? Sure, thank you, Luis. I'm happy to be here with the podcast. So I, as uh, Luis mentioned, I've been a professor at the University of Illinois since 1989. Uh, my areas of research have centered on dry cows and transition cows, uh, looking at metabolism and management that affects um, transition to lactation. And also I've done quite a bit of work with supplemental fats and uh, a lot of work with nutrition of the baby calf. Uh, in addition, I teach courses, both graduate and undergraduate courses in, in nutrition and, and dairy nutrition or ruminant nutrition, and had a, a lot of opportunities to perform outreach work around the world. Well, obviously, you are very well known for your work, and uh, we, we are very lucky to discuss a little bit of nutritional physiology uh, of transition cows today and understand a little bit more how it impacts health and production uh, during the transition period, right? And obviously, this is a, a very important topic that we continue to, to learn more about and, and dig into it to see if we can actually improve early lactation as well as all the persistence later on. Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M, the best in-class rumen-protected methionine product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production capture more value from their components, and maintain the lifetime performance of their herds. For more product information and to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids, go to milkpay.com. So could you please describe to us a little bit on how the energy metabolism of the cow change uh, from the dry period to the early lactation? So the, the, the key organs that we think about are the liver and the adipose tissues, and increasingly uh, a lot of focus being developed on the, the muscle of the cow as well. So as the cow goes from, from pre-calving to post-calving, the demands for lactation tend to decrease uh, blood glucose levels as lactose, or excuse me, glucose is pulled out of the blood to make milk lactose and drive milk production. In response to this uh, uh, situation of energy demand, the adipose tissues mobilize more fatty acids that circulate as, as non-esterified fatty acids or NEFA. And some of these can be taken up by the liver and either converted back to fat, causing uh, fat accumulation in the liver, or they can be converted into ketone bodies, which can serve as alternate fuels for the muscle and heart and other tissues. So that's the, the normal response. Um, the ketone body production to, to some degree is a normal response of the cows to change the metabolism and adapt to the demands of lactation. But when these uh, changes become uh, dysregulated, we can have excessive accumulation of fat in the liver or excessive production of ketone bodies. Um, the the um, interesting fact that is coming out of recent research by Lance Baumgart and others, uh, Giuseppe Bertoni and Arminio Trevisi in Italy, 
uh, have shown that the that the immune system becomes activated in response to an infectious challenge or to a, a, a stressor in the environment. Um, and that can cause some, some different reactions in the animal, different changes in metabolism. Blood glucose tends to stay higher because the immune system needs glucose to fuel its activities. Um, NEFA and, and BHBA ketone bodies may still increase, but perhaps not to the same level as, as a, a, a clear energy deficiency would suggest. So that's kind of an, an overview of, of the changes that are happening in early lactation. And from that perspective, it's a, it's a very uh, interesting set of events. Uh, from that perspective, how this chain of events could affect the health and productivity of dairy cows? So again, normally the cow is able to adapt its metabolism to these changes in physiological state. But if the immune system is activated, that, that creates additional challenges to the cow. We tend to have more problems then with, with subclinical or clinical ketosis. And in turn, that can lead to other, other problems um, the immune system activation tends to reduce blood calcium further at calving and, and into the very early part of lactation. And so more uh, subclinical or, or, or even clinical uh, hypocalcemia. Um, the the um, increased ketone body production or subclinical ketosis is associated with greater incidence of other health disorders, such as displaced abomasum. Um, um, and and um, again, these disorders can cause a, a cycle of spiraling down as the cow is, is unable to maintain its, its homeostasis and, and the normal metabolic adaptations that would support lactation. And from a nutrition perspective, are there any nutrition interventions that we could use prepartum or postpartum that could help to mitigate this issue? Yeah, that's a great question. Our research over the past uh, 20 to 25 years has been involved in looking at what we call controlled energy diets. And this is, is just preventing overfeeding of energy. With, with energy overfeeding during the dry period relative to the cow's requirements, we see the adipose tissue becomes uh, actually more um, geared up to mobilize fatty acids af after calving. And so the degree of, of fat mobilization and NEFA uh, accumulation becomes greater if the cow is overfed pre-calving. So feeding the cow closer to its requirements using a, a bulky, high forage diet um, helps to avoid some of these changes. Um, and again, just um, good management procedures in the dry period, especially related to cow comfort, um, is, is critical uh, to, to prevent the cow going into these changes associated with the immune activation. So basically a strong, uh, good management practice together with a low energy diet is one of the targets for our, uh, prepartum. Uh, how, how, how does the cow room and environment change? Uh, and do we have to be careful when feeding the postpartum cows when we feed a low energy uh, diet before parturition? The low energy diet that we want to feed is a, a TMR, which contains some of the same types of forages that the cow is going to see after lactation. So if we have a high corn silage diet, we want to make sure that we're still feeding corn silage in the, the dry period and close up period. Um, along with uh, a large amount of the, the bulky forage to control the total intake. So when we're doing that, the rumen uh, microbial population is able to adapt fairly quickly to changes in the, the diet after calving. The, I, I refer to it as the rumen microorganisms are idling during the, the close-up period and ready to uh, uh, accelerate their, their metabolism and growth when we change the diet at calving. And in addition to uh, some of those changes in diet as well as in management uh, prepartum, if we, if we shift towards the postpartum, 
Do you have any specific recommendations? I'm assuming in terms of management, we want to also reduce the stress there, correct? Correct. That's very important to, that we don't overcrowd the fresh cows, um, provide good cow comfort during that period. Um, there's some, some interesting recent research that came out of the University of Alberta that looked at going to a very high starch content immediately after calving and showed that, that cows actually produced the most milk when they went to a high starch ration after calving, after coming off a, a relatively low starch diet pre-calving. Um, so I think that, that perhaps we've been over uh, compensating in, in fear of throwing cows off feed or into ruminant acidosis when the keys are involved with uh, maintaining the good forage intake for the rumen health. And if we're doing that, the rumen seems to be relatively resilient to go into a, a, a quite high starch diet um, fairly abruptly at calving. That's fascinating to me because, you know, uh, it, it looks very nice how a cow needs a, a very low energy early on. And then as, as you transition towards the postpartum period, you have to shift everything and bring a little bit more energy to compensate some of those uh, factors. Uh, said that, do you have any suggestions uh, on how to best implement some of those diets postpartum to make sure we actually achieve uh, the goal of optimizing energy intake and minimizing the negative energy balance? Yeah, I think that, again, the forage base is, is critical. And if we have a, a separate fresh cow diet, uh, maintaining a, a slightly higher percentage of forage in that diet is, is probably wise and, and a, a safety factor as long as we don't keep the cows in the fresh cow pen too long because I think that can actually be more detrimental than not having them in long enough. Um, so that's, that's a big factor, um, not being afraid to, to ramp up the energy. Um, you know, the use of, of uh, calcium propionate or other glucose precursors can be used as a, um, a, a me method to help cows transition if there is a high incidence of uh, ketosis in the, the herds. But sometimes I think we become overly dependent on, on these reactionary responses rather than being more proactive in how we're setting up the, the diet formulation. Absolutely. I think that's a great point. And, uh, and when you mention, you know, uh, the, the addition of uh, any specific additive related to propionate, uh, do you suggest adding those directly to the diet or, or you prefer when we use uh, a drench style approach? I think that the if we're having problems with subclinical ketosis, that the the most effective way is to drench the cows because then we get a, a bolus of insulin release and that seems to to interrupt the cycle in many cases. Um, I, I think that in adding them to the diet, we're um, other than providing highly bioavailable calcium. We're really not providing much more benefit than just a little extra grain that would be fermenting to a, a higher proportion of propionate. Oh, that's a very, very interesting facts as well. Uh, so a, a lot of good tips today, you know, and hope we can help you at home to uh, put better management practice and nutritional approaches to work with your transition cows. Uh, thanks again, Dr. Drakely, for joining us uh, today. Uh, thank you for listening to the podcast. We hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Hey, everyone. We are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly. If you have a dairy nutrition-related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Thank you and hope to see you soon.